through fifth grade, you look awesome in those Christmas PJs. We're so glad you joined us today, and we cannot wait for you to hear today's story. We are continuing to talk about God's greatest gift. It's Jesus, and he's for you, and he's for me, and we cannot wait. But before we get to that, let's stand on up to our feet and join in worship together. celebrating Christmas. Oh, and we're also doing this. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about Christmas. Which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. What do you love the most about getting ready for Christmas? Oh, everything. The lights, decorations, ooh, Christmas specials. And that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Don't forget setting up the nativity. Nativity? You know, all the figures from the Christmas story. Oh, yeah. We still put up the plastic manger scene from when I was a kid. Plus, we bake all sorts of cookies. Oh, I love Christmas cookies. Good, because we're going to do it all by building a gingerbread nativity. Oh, do we have to bake? Nope, but we do have to architect. Here we have all of our characters. We have Mary, we have Joseph, we have baby Jesus, and one, two, three wise men. What about the shepherds? The kid didn't have any shepherds. Well, I'm turning this guy into a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> the kid also didn't have any barns or stable or a shed, so we're gonna be using... Graham crackers. Yeah, I mean, this is where our architectural skills really come in. Have you ever made a gingerbread house before? Yeah, but the icing never holds right. The pieces always slide or fall down. Not today, because today we're using... Sugar glue. Mm, I'm not 
seeing glue. Well, that's because we have to apply super heat until it melts like lava. Oh, that's cool. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Remember, do not do this alone. Grab an adult to help. All right, first step. Pour the sugar into a bottom-heavy saucepan. Thank you. All right, that should be enough to start. Step two, place the sugar on a burner on medium-high heat. Definitely grab a grown-up for this part. Step three, swirl the sugar and stir as it starts to melt. Thank you. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have glue. Woo, it's actually caramelized. Sugar, or sucrose, is a single molecule. When heat is applied, it kicks off a series of chemical reactions. These can form up to 1,000 different compounds that make up caramel. It's so complicated, scientists aren't even sure how it works yet. Step five, keep your sugar glue warm while you build. Yay! <laughs> hmm, I think Frank Lloyd Wright will be proud. Who? Oh, the famous architect. Although I don't think Frank Lloyd Wright worked in gingerbread and sugar glue. Tasty though. Do we get to decorate? Yes, right now. <laughs> and oh. <laughs> well, that turned out kind of. I mean, you can tell what it is, right? <laughs> Away in a manger, one cookie for a bed. All right, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through the Israelites, but over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and if he had a plan for them. God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. And at last, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to tell a girl named Mary she would have a very special baby. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Okay, the stage was set. After so many long years, God's amazing rescue plan was underway. And God actually used a foreign king to help carry out that plan. The Jewish people lived under Roman rule, and the Roman leader, Caesar Augustus, needed money for his fine palaces and large army. I command a census of every single person in my entire empire. That meant that every person had to be counted and placed on a list to pay expensive taxes to Rome. And news of this census traveled all the way from Rome to the tiny town of Nazareth in Judea, on the very edge of the Roman Empire. Hear ye! Hear ye! Every person must go immediately to their own hometown to be listed. A carpenter named Joseph and the girl he was engaged to marry, named Mary, heard the decree. Whew, I guess I'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. I guess we'll be making a road trip to Bethlehem. Both Joseph and Mary had been born into the family line of King David, so they would have to make the week-long journey to Bethlehem, the town of David, in order to be counted. Now, this was more than a little inconvenient, as Mary was nearly ready to have a baby, a baby whose birth had been announced by an angel. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. 
The trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem was uh, about 70 miles, which is just a couple hours by car, but a whole week of travel on foot or by donkey. The journey was long and dusty. Camping out on the rough ground could not have been very comfortable for Mary. At last, Mary and Joseph saw the town of Bethlehem. They must have been ready for a hot bath and a quiet place to stay after that long journey. But the little town of Bethlehem was not so still and silent. Lots of other people had come to be counted as well. They filled every inn and guest room in town. There has got to be room for us somewhere. Have we checked with all of your relatives? Even my great aunt Hulda and, and my third cousins twice removed. Finally, the very last home that Mary and Joseph tried had a room, sort of. They were offered a place to stay with the animals. I don't know about this. It's dry, it's warm, and this baby really, really, really needs a place to be born. So Mary and Joseph settled into their most unusual guest room, and there with the cows, and sheep, and chickens, Mary's brand new baby boy was born. It's just like the angel told you, and his name. The angel said we must call him Jesus. Mary wrapped her baby tightly in long strips of cloth to keep him warm and cozy. There was no crib or cradle, so she placed him in a manger. The king of the entire world slept peacefully in the animal's feeding trough as Mary and Joseph looked on, and outside, the nighttime sky blazed with stars. God's very own son, the best gift ever, came into the world in the most unexpected way. And the birth announcement, well, I'm just gonna save that for later. Most amazing birth story ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, nobody understood it then, but this tiny baby was going to grow up to teach and heal and show people what God was like. And then Jesus would choose to lay down his life and the whole world to defeat death itself. That is some Christmas gift. Not exactly something you just find on an Amazon wish list. So what's our part in the story? Well, our world gets wrapped up in hoping for so many different things, you know? We want everything from world peace down to a, a shiny new skateboard, and that's great. But in the middle of it all, be sure to remember the most important gift. Right, so find a quiet moment to thank God for the gift of Jesus and ask God to help you walk with Jesus every moment of the coming year. Yeah, because knowing Jesus is an amazing gift that you can open every single day. I think you've got it. So, Merry Christmas, ho, 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 ho. See you next Merry time. Merry Christmas, bye, Brian. Bye, Brian. So here's the thing, Jesus is the greatest gift. I think we need some sheep at the manger. Big, fluffy ones. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. All right, K through fifth grade, party on in those Christmas PJs, and we'll see you right back here next week for more worship in a Bible story.